One afternoon, it was clear enough from the tracks that the animals weren't far off. The wind was in my face, which was good for approaching them without them knowing I was there. And all of a sudden, I saw one of the animals quite clearly, and now I must admit, I was really afraid. It had stopped among some young saplings. It was a huge elephant with big white tusks, very curved, and it was a dark chestnut color as far as I could see. It had fairly long hair on the hindquarters, but it seemed shorter on the front. I must say I had no idea that they were such big elephants. It had huge legs and moved very slowly. I've only ever seen elephants in pictures, but I must say that even from this distance, we were some 300 yards apart. I can never have believed any beast could be so big. Now this was taken from a Russian hunter in 1918 roaming the Siberian taiga and claimed that he stumbled upon gigantic oval tracks in the dirt, each about two feet across. Now he tracked the footprints until they led to a huge heap of dung composed of vegetable matter. Limbs in the entire area appeared broken at a height of 10 feet as if something massive had recently pushed through the forest. But let's fast forward to modern day just real quick. And one of the most recent alleged sightings occurred in 2012. Some people say it's a hoax, but others claim it could be evidence that woolly mammoths are still alive. Someone claimed to be an engineer employed by the Russian government who had posted a video online. Now the footage supposedly recorded the summer before in Siberia's own Chukotka Autonomous Okrog region and clearly shows a large dark shape wading across a river complete with a long trunk. Now immediately, the video was met with accusations of hoaxes and lies, but many people thought that it was simply a bear carrying a fish in its mouth. Some Hollywood experts claimed that the footage looked intentionally blurred. In February of 2012, a videographer stepped forward and claimed that the footage was actually his, though he never remembered seeing a mammoth among the wildlife he captured. Oh, come on, guys. Now, this has led many to suspect that the video is actually a CGI hoax. Even if the Siberian mammoth footage recorded in 2011 was a hoax, the region has no shortage of stories where eyewitnesses claim to have seen the gigantic hairy beasts. Now, the possibility that woolly mammoths still survive in the Siberian wilderness is appealing. I mean, after all, the region is famously inhospitable with a population density of only seven people per square mile. It seems entirely possible that a population of these beasts might be able to remain hidden long after their presumed extinction. Suggestions that mammoths still live today can be found in some North American tribal lore as well. The nest copy of Labrador once spoke of a monster who had used its long nose to strike people in the Northeast. In the Northeast, Algonquin tribes once described what they called a great moose that prepared its nest with a limb or a fifth leg. This, of course, strikingly resembles a trunk, either that or a porn star moose. Are there indeed relict mammoth populations in the coldest, most remote parts of our very world? Perhaps. But another far stranger possibility is that woolly mammoths did indeed die out, but managed to slip into the modern day through rips in time. Yeah, it's a wild idea, but one case suggests that this is precisely what is happening. On September 18th, 2008, Jill O'Brien visited Alaska's Wrangell Elias National Park. An avid photographer, she had just finished setting up what she described as a great shot of Mount St. Elias when she noticed a funny crunching and thudding on the ground. Now, when she turned to look, Jill saw something that left her amazed and startled. It was a small, hairy elephant running toward her by all appearances, a juvenile woolly mammoth. Now, she said that it stood around four feet tall. As it raced in her direction, it offered her a quick glance her way and then vanished into a small black cloud of smoke 
that sucked into itself and was gone. These are her words. The entire affair lasted no longer than seven seconds at most, but left a very strong impression on Jill. <laughs> you don't say. Now, years later, she actually told researcher Nick Redfern it was a mammoth. It was a baby mammoth. It was there one second, then it looked to me, and it was gone. Like it went invisible or just vanished. While the idea of encountering a woolly mammoth in the wilderness sounds frightening, it would probably leave you alone if you kept your distance. If you stumble upon a saber-toothed cat, you run the risk of becoming its lunch. Now, saber-toothed cats were large predators that went extinct somewhere between 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. One species, Smilodon, had front fangs about 11 inches long. That's not a tooth. That's a tooth. Saber-toothed cats were once known as saber-toothed tigers, but it was determined that they were not tigers at all. Recently, even the term saber-toothed cat is falling out of favor as they don't appear to be closely related to cats at all. Now, paleontologists have rebranded them saber-toothed predators. Like woolly mammoths, most people presume that these predators died out millennia ago. But we have several sightings over the course of the 20th century that do suggest otherwise. In his 1966 book, The Cloud Forest, author Peter Matheson shared a story told to him in Paraguay by a sailor. Matheson says that the sailor described a rare striped cat not quite so large as a jaguar and very timid, which is possessed of two very large protruding teeth. Now this animal, he said, occurs in the mountain jungles of Colombia and Ecuador and he has glimpsed it once himself. The story shared by Matheson's informant alludes to the fact that many contemporary saber-toothed cat sightings occur from the southwestern United States all the way through Latin America. Now, for instance, for over a hundred years, a story has persisted that somewhere in Arizona, two of the predators were shot and killed by U.S. cavalrymen around the year 1913. Now, another sighting allegedly occurred in 1946 in New Mexico, a man by the name of Jerry Padilla. Now, he claimed that a deceased family member had shared their sighting of what seemed to be a saber-toothed cat. Its pelt was the color of a lion's. Another eyewitness claimed in 1975 to have encountered what locals called a mutant jaguar in Paraguay. It was successfully shot and killed and found to weigh 160 pounds. And zoologist Juan Akivar allegedly examined this specimen and described it as having a pair of two canine teeth, each measuring a foot long. It wasn't one tooth, it was two. Ha ha ha. Sorry, dad joke. While Juan suspected this was the find of the century, a Smilodon specimen in the flesh, the body was in the hands of local authorities who did not wish to upset the residents for some reason, perhaps to avoid panic. Now they stuck to the mutant jaguar explanation and presumably disposed of the carcass elsewhere. Now interestingly, Africa has its own tradition of saber-toothed cat sightings. In Chad, the Central African Republic and South Sudan, these are known as Tigre de Montaña and water lions. Now, in 1970, cryptozoologist Christian Lee Knoll showed a series of living and extinct cats to his indigenous trackers. He had asked each of them to identify which one bore the closest resemblance to the Tigre de Montaña, and each one quickly selected a picture of the Smilodon. So Christian wrote this, To convince me, they took me to a rock shelter cave where, according to them, there was a a mountain tiger about 30 years ago. My first tracker, J. May, affirmed to have seen it with his father during a hunting party in these hills of Malay. He and his father had managed to kill a horse antelope and at the time of the skinning, a mountain tiger had emerged from the bush to seize the trophy and had won without apparent effort in front of both terrified and dumbfounded hunters who returned empty-handed to the village. One of the few saber-toothed cat sightings outside the Americas or Africa is also one of the most recent, because in May of 1994, a witness in China's northwestern Hubei province spotted what appeared to be a massive white cat with vertical stripes on the tallest peak in the Shenanjia region. The animal seemed to be between 13 and 16 feet long. That's ridiculous. While this could 
conceivably be dismissed as a white tiger, one aspect of the sighting made this cat stand out. It displayed a pair of enormous canine teeth, estimated to be at least nine inches long. After spotting the massive predator, the witness learned that local hunters had actually killed several of these creatures in the past. Is extinction the end? Well, maybe not. It seems like every year we are always met with new stories of various species presumed long gone from the face of the earth, reappearing in the most unlikely of places. For example, towards the end of last year, scientists even discovered off the coast of California a clam specimen that was believed to have died out over 40 thousand years ago. Could bigger species like woolly mammoths and saber-toothed cats still exist? Now, compared to the clam species, the woolly mammoth vanished a short time ago. Now, the last mammoth presumably died only 3,600 years in the past, but stories where people see these majestic creatures persist into the modern era, calling into question whether they fully ever went extinct or clung to survival in sporadic pockets here and there. While we don't have any stories of saber-toothed cats entering or leaving glitches in time, like Jill's baby mammoth story, we are still left wondering where these animals long believed extinct might come from. Are their populations still out there hiding from human beings? Or when they visit, are they only here temporarily? Either way, the fact that they are seen from time to time offers a glimmer of hope. Whenever we declare a species vanished from the face of the earth, they might still persevere somewhere, somehow, some way. Although we assume extinction is the end, we are sometimes proven very wrong to our constant delight. But more importantly, I want to know what you guys think, so be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. I would love to hear from all of you. And as always, if you guys enjoy this kind of content, be sure to go ahead and slap that like and subscribe button for more videos just like this one. And as always, guys, I love you all. Keep an open mind, and I'll see you guys in the very next video.